Okay, well, here we go. Today is 928-2020, episode 117 of Pink Glue, Censored. So this uh, topic is censorship. We're looking at Google deletes Drive files. Now, Google Drive, of course, we think is personal. We stick what we can in there. Um, over so many uh, gigabytes, you pay for that. And yet Google has uh, gone on and deleted some personal files and or links from individuals um, out of their drive. Um, software engineer code uh, has their code deleted. Um, Spotify threatening to strike. And it's time to speak up. Here we go. You know, next, what are they going to do? Have us put masks over our face to cover our mouths to keep us silent? Oh, I guess they already do. Okay, here's a um, September 28th. This came out this morning. Uh, just about an hour ago is when I saw it, but I'm sure by the time this gets launched, it'll, it'll be um, some, some additional time has passed there. But this came out this morning, and this was by Mr. Jordan. And Mr. Jordan is Jim Jordan. He, James uh, Daniel Jordan is an American politician serving as a U.S. representative for Ohio's 4th Congressional District since 2007. And um, so there's information on who this is. He was once again speaking out, and today's um, conversation is time to stand up and speak out. This is worth every single second of your time, I guarantee you, is the title. And this was uh, posted by Viable TV. So I encourage you to go ahead and, and use uh, the link here and watch it. But he raises quite a bit of, uh, of excellent points, one of which a gentleman went fishing with his family, caught some fish, took a picture of, of the fish. It got posted to public media and his job was threatened. Where does the line between free speech stop and cancel culture uh, begin? It's, 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 again, I go back to the word baffling. This was probably, knowing a t-shirt, it was probably the top one on a pile, as Mr. Jordan relates. Um, so anyways, time to stand up and speak out. Um, a great scenario there on what's going on. So thank you very much, Mr. Jordan. And I've got two following up here from uh, Tim Pool. This is on Timcast, and this was actually posted back in May, May 23rd, 2020. We all know that there was a, a video that came out at that time, and um, it was a, a documentary. Uh, Tim does go over the pros and cons of documentaries as he, he had helped um, compile them before. And I have also, uh, worked along that that line as well. And it's very easy to create a narrative to put several truths in and then maybe bend a little and some truths and bend a little with some images, some convincing, oh, wait, that's Hollywood. Uh, but anyways, uh, so this the title is very interesting though. And so we're just bringing this up today along the censorship conversation. Google Drive takes down users' personal copy of this documentary after it was flagged by the Washington Post. Now this is very interesting because he then goes through the article where the Washington Post not only flagged it, but they wrote an article stating why it should be removed and Google took action and removed it from users' accounts. And where, where is the line here? If it's a free service, there's one set of rules. If you pay, there's probably another set of rules, but all rules seem to have gone out the table. So if you've got the lesson here, if you have anything on your Google Drive that you need to protect and or don't want used against you and or don't want sold as your data profile, then that's probably not the place to put it. But the follow-up question is, where do you put it? As we um, reported on last week, in one of the episodes, we discussed that uh, places like Weebly and um, Webhost and Hostgator and a number of those that you can go in and set up your personal web page, the content is still somehow owned by them and can be taken down at any time. So where do you put your information? Private, <laughs> privately on your home computer, apparently which um, we'll be discussing that as we move forward. So again, um, I, I highly recommend that if you haven't already seen this, take a look at this. This is at Tim Cask, Google Censor, someone's personal 
Google Drive, Drive files and Trump bans panel to review censorship. Now, uh, Tim Pool will also point out that this, this is not a big fish. Um, thinking about maybe creating a panel that might possibly review something, that means no action will be taken. But the bigger concept is, is an awareness that we need to, to wake up from. Um, oh, you know, speaking of that, it looks like the file that, um, that I had set up has now disappeared as well. Um, just post that there so we don't get forget to go back to it. Okay, so here we go on um, September 25th. So this is three days ago, and I believe we reviewed this in another episode from another perspective. This is again from Tim Pool, and that is Tim Cass IRL. Um, Spotify employees threatened to strike over Joe Rogan experience episodes. They feel unsafe with words. Now, this is really interesting from a number of perspectives. So in a cancel culture, who has the right to speak up and who doesn't? And how is it that these employees have a right to speak up and an expectation to keep their jobs? I, I thought that there's there's a lot going on there. So who is perpetuating this narrative that one, it's accepted that two of these individuals, and I don't know how, how large a group, was not shown the door. And uh, three, how is this making uh, a big media splash? Who, is, again, who is perpetuating the narrative here? But there's a number of, of issues. So maybe the individuals can't just speak out and have content taken down. But my question is, if they feel it's unsafe, well, who's going to review it? If they want an opportunity to review the information and edit it as they're asking before it's posted, then how unsafe is it if they want to spend time on the material or make other people spend time on the material? Again, what happened to free speech? And anybody who knows anything about podcasts or uh, YouTube videos or speaking out at some point has crossed the path of Joe Rogan and seeing the wide spectrum of individuals that he brings on his show to allow them to speak. And, and so this is, a, again, a whole nother level of censorship and, and taking away somebody else's right to speak. Now, an agreement was made, and the files were uploaded to Spotify. Somehow, some didn't quite make it over, and, and they said it was an editing error, I think is what they attributed to, and there's a wink on that one. But, uh, but at what point, how are they feeling unsafe with the words that they're going to lead to a strike? Well, the answer is because of the the, the support that we're getting from our government, from the judges, from the DAs, from the media, if an individual feels unsafe in a workplace, there are probably triggers that would lead to some sort of employee protections. And by filing claims under employee protections, they might have more leverage than just an individual speaking up and saying, hey, we want this reviewed and we want to edit it before it's post. So, so this will be very interesting how far this goes, whether or not it, it goes very far at our, all. And of course, we'll, we're all waiting to see whether or not Joe Rogan will start speaking up or not. He's uh, been silent since the, the transfer. Now, this is a very interesting one. This is, it's gotten quite a few views here, 285,000. This was posted back in 2018. And this individual is, let's see here, Healthy Software Developer is the, the YouTube channel. And the title is, They Watched Us with Webcams and Rewrote Our Code. So, you know, it, I started my first company as a consultant, and then I, I got picked up by one of the large consulting firms and, and moved on a path in that direction. And it, it, along the way, um, many times it's been suggested to me that, you know, just go back out and start your own company. We want to work for you, and we, we want to support 
what you're doing and how you stand up for employees. So, you know, there's a lot of encouragement there, but what individuals don't understand, running your own consulting firm is not that different from being a consultant and or even being an employee in this culture. You still need somebody in order to pay the bills. And if they, for whatever reason, don't want to encourage your size, your shape, your skin color, uh, the way you support um, some employees over supervisors, the outreach, a speak, apparently a t-shirt, it's the same thing, except for then more people are infected on a larger level. Running a company takes a lot of politics, takes a lot of lobbying, takes a lot of hand-holding, and as this gentleman will post out, a lot of smiles on your faces when you know that smiles are not appropriate. So here, I've marked this video because right at 522, he talks about a client that he and his employees were working for, and they were working on site and the clients were in another city. And because of issues that his developers had found, the clients decided to set up on their desk um, a, a webcam and the webcam watched them and listened to them. And, you know, we all know that when we're in an office environment or using office equipment, there's a number of, of protocols in place to protect the employer, quote unquote. But the blatancy of, of a team being hired to support another team and having them strictly monitored, th there's questions there and there's implications as to, oh, there's deep implications. Okay, so at 522, they bring up, um, the, the group was not allowed to even chat or talk. They had to sit in silence. And then at marker 1009 is when he discusses the webcam scenario. Now, if you listen to this video, you can tell that this guy appears to be an honest individual, went in with a team to truly help. They came up with a lot of great solutions from bringing experts in. And for some reasons, those, those um, solutions were not desired. And we've seen this many, many times in Silicon Valley. Now, this gentleman happened to be from Austin and the, the clients, he was on a HQ site. However, the two um, employees were in DC. So even though he was on the headquarters campus, there was still a, um, a distance there. But we see this in Silicon Valley quite often. There's some kind of narrative being set up. And, and I'll give the example of Yahoo. There was a period of time where the Yahoo employees were wondering what is going on? I'm writing an excellent code, producing an excellent product. I'm being encouraged along the way. I'm even given a team to create it. And then all of a sudden, the team is laid off. Or I'm given a, an office that is really a closet to sit in, and the product doesn't get produced. There were a lot of stumbling blocks where um, a core, for instance, if you do a Google search, you'll look at... Um, for, for today, I, I typed in uh, YouTube on Google as a specific example, and immediately uh, YouTube came up. We're off to the races. But every once in a while, a Yahoo um, search will pull up, and, and I won't be looking at where it's searching, so I'll, I'll look into Yahoo, and I'll type in YouTube, and then I'll get a list of three pages of other companies that may or may not even have to do with YouTube, and I'm like, WTF? This isn't even what I asked for. But there's a lot of sabotage that goes into the companies and there's only so much investment, um, investment money that comes in and intellectual support. And when you want to reduce one and build another, as we saw during the transition from reducing Yahoo as being the number one search engine on the planet to increasing Google to being the number one uh, software, a search engine on the planet, you can just imagine all the games and manipulation that the employees at Google, at Yahoo had to face without even being actually confronted or honestly being told, look, we're going to minimize this platform. Instead, they would go and do the best work possible and at first start scratching their heads as to what's going on and then wondering, it just baffled it really messes psychologically with individuals. 
And so this, this employee, this um, uh, contracting company is giving one experience of what happened when they went in to help and the help wasn't wanted and all the psychological uh, manipulations that, that they faced along the way. So um, uh, this is another one I wanted to bring up and, and it looked like the files were pulled down when I, I launched this, so I, you know, anyways. So um, did you know that as an employee, and, and this is specific to California, I'm talking, I don't know uh, different state laws, but employee rights to a personnel file. Updated April 2019, employees have a right to see their personnel file. Whatever the motive, explains uh, employment lawyer at this place. Most employers should be aware that their staff can ask to see their personnel file and any data on them, including disciplinary records and emails. So, so this was brought to my attention recently. In California, you've got X amount of days for the employer to provide your employee file, and you've got X amount of days for them to imply to provide your payroll records. Now, most in California and probably nationwide, our employee records are online, so that's accessible by you anyways. But you know, it's really interesting to ask to see what the employer has on you. Things like an NDA, whether or not arbitration was agreed to. And um, also if there's, you know, a lot of companies use DocuSign and different electronic signatures, uh, what, what is attached to that. If there's been any disciplinary action and or emails that they have stuck in your file, do they relate to you? Were you really ever disciplined? So it's really interesting to see as this narrative is being created um, for or against you. And so I recently requested my employee file and I, I had an, actually an attorney request it for me. And it, I think on the outset, they had 21 days to respond with the full file. It was 14 days for one and 21 days for, for the rest within that time frame. And they ex asked for an extension, which I thought was either very odd because you either have that data or you don't. They did provide part of it, but said that there's more. Okay, where would the more be? And what was extremely I can say interesting, but disconcerting is in my employee file, there were 19 pages of um, electronically signed agreements that were not signed by me, but had my name on them. And so in that same file, I started looking to match signatures and names. And it turned out that somebody in HR for the, com for the company I work for took the liberty of signing 19 legal documents with my name on them, their signature, passed them off as mine, and put them in my employee file. This raises a lot of questions. So now I have 19 pages of documents in my employee file that were not signed by me that have my name on it, that are, are stating uh, legal agreements. And in addition to that, they state that there's more to the employee file that they haven't provided yet and we're now about two months out. So I just realized that there was an opportunity to, hey, you know, let's take a peek at what's in there just out of interest and this is what I found out. So I would definitely encourage you to, to contact your employee. It's, it, it's not a big deal really, you just contact them and ask them, you know, under the law I understand I have a right to my employee file, would you mind emailing it to me? And it might be interesting what you come up with. So, so once again, let's just start here. We went over the hearing and it's time to stand up and speak out. And, and I really, really do, just like the tagline here says viable, it's worth your, worth your time to see that. And then we've got um, Tim on uh, Timcast uh, relaying to us that, hey, everything in your Google Drive isn't yours. And then we have Spotify employees speaking out to threaten over episodes that they want editing rights. It's too unsafe, but they want to take more time with the files and review them. And then we've got a, a software engineer who says that while on a job, a webcam was set up right on their desk to monitor them and their code was rewritten. 
All right, so this has been Pink Blue, Pink Glue, ec episode 117, censored issue. And once again, I just want to give give back and, and say thank you and gratitude. I am really appreciating. I'm loving the support. Here I sit at, with a microphone on and, and stare at a, at a computer. And it's, it, you know, I, I just don't know if my voice is being heard or not. And I'm just really, really grateful for those who take the time to reach out and say, hey, kudos, or hey, we're also the silent majority and we're supporting you. And also giving me tips on the next um, information to delve into. All right, there'll be another one coming up later today. This is censorship.